Well, I had to do a redo. <laughs> Uploaded the video and realized that it was like, like this. So I quickly deleted it, so I don't think anybody saw it. But I'll redo the video. Well, why not? I don't mind doing it twice. <laughs> Good morning, it is Thursday, and I have this article, Active Expectation, the series, and the article out of it, it's called The Charisma of Expectation, beautiful, so I told you about those series, like Active Expectation and Rooted and Grounded in Love, and it's like different sections of different parts of different articles in them series. So I'm on active expectation today. All right, and it comes from the passage, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Now we are entreating you, brethren, be patient toward all. See that no one may be rendering evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue that which is good for one another as well as for all. Today we often hear of the great enthusiasm among certain circles, to return to the so-called charismatic endowments of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14. The Greek word charisma, translated grace in the concordant literal New Testament, means in the context of 1 Corinthians a gracious gift. In all of these man-made attempts to speak in languages or perhaps heal or even prophecy, there is often a tragic failure to recognize that 1 Corinthians 13 is part of the context. There the Apostle Paul shows us the greater graces. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 31. Of faith, expectation, and love. All other graces were limited in their benefits. The charisma of healing could only produce healing. The endowment of prophecy only produced prophecy. But faith, expectation, and love, though they could not produce some more fleshly manifestations of the other gifts, multiply into all kinds of necessary spiritual blessings. Surely this is the one reason why the, these three, to remain while others ceased. And they have ceased. You cannot heal. You cannot prophesy. None of that is for today. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 and 13. How good it would be if all believers were as zealous for the great the, these the three greater graces of faith, expectation, and love as those deceived brethren are who seek to speak in tongues or prophesy or prophecy. We have been studying the grace of expectation in this series of meditations on First Thessalonians chapter five verses twelve through twenty two. The fruit of the charisma of expectation is not merely an anticipation of the presence of our Lord. True, this joyful anticipation, which the Thessal Thessalonians lacked, is one important benefit of expectation, and per perhaps one which is still neither appreciated nor acted upon by many of us today. Yet it is not the only result of this gracious gift of God, for as we have already noted, such blessings as peace, order, and genuine solicitude for the needs of others are natural results of expectation. Thus we find in this lesson that patience and the pursuit of good are also produced by this greater charisma of expectation. Be patient toward all is the sixth request in this list. Patience cannot be created by our own efforts. We know this. We cannot create patience. How can you be patient within yourself? It's impossible. This has to be a gift from God to be patient. I know this 100%. I'm the most impatient person you, can, you know out there. I'm very impatient, especially when I drive. When I'm driving, I got no patience. But God gives me patience. This is a gift and God's gracious gift. It must be formed naturally through growth and harvest in the fertile soil of God's gracious gifts. Even as sorrow is removed by our appropriation of 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18, so also is impatience removed by the same expectation. The, belie the believer who most fully appreciates the grandeur of expectation, whose outlook is more, more, most like Paul's, 
glorying in expectation of the glory of God, Romans 5, 2, is certain to increase in his patience, not just toward other believers, but toward all. Patience is far feeling. That's the actual elements. Far feeling. Patience. Far feeling. The far has to do with time. Showing a willingness to wait steadfastly rather than reacting hastily. The feeling. So the second part of the element. Far feeling. Feeling has to do with emotion. And it shows what it is that is willingly held in check as time progresses. We then learn to be patient towards all. When we hold fast to our expectation, and the more certain we are of the victorious outcome, the stronger becomes our patience. In a similar manner, the seventh standard for our walk set forth in this passage, the pursuit of good for others can only be achieved by means of God's graces of faith, expectation, and love. Again, since the context emphasizes expectation, we will note how it especially can affect this pursuit. Our view of God's goals must so affect our attitude toward all mankind that we cannot return evil for evil. Not only in our thinking, but in active pursuit, we seek the other's person's good. In 1 Timothy 2.4, the apostle presents his expectation of the salvation of all mankind, knowing that the assurance of this outlook will produce in Timothy the prayers and petitions and pleadings for all mankind, which such a servant of the Lord should make. We see, therefore, the broader our view of God's goal becomes, the greater active expectation becomes. The more we become aware of our expectation, the more we can come to live in our expectation. 24-7, living in expectation. This is why the greater graces like faith, expectation, and love are granted to us. The more we focus on our expectation 24-7, moment by moment, like I said yesterday, and like I said on many shows, Pursue it, pursue it, pursue it, pursue it, pursue it. These greater gifts, these greater graces given by God, by our focus on our expectation of being changed from mortal to immortal, taking up our celestial lot, meeting our Lord in the air, always being together with our Lord. Is not that the expectation of resurrection of those who have gone to repose, our brethren, and for us as enduring to the presence of the Lord. So that is it, act of expectation. The measure of our grasp of the charismatic gifts of expectation is the measure of our peace, our patience, and our pursuit of good. Tremendously tremendous. That's all I can say. I love saying that because it, it is. Tremendous, tremendous expectation to be changed. Hold on to that today and meditate upon that today. Happy Thursday. I love you all.